Hello everyone, welcome back to another brand new video. So this topic is going to be from Max Klemenko. So as of today, we're going to find out a couple of things. Like how Max and his grandmother met up in Poland after grandmother escaped Ukraine as a refugee. What exactly has happened to her home when grandmother left Ukraine? And then finally, grandmother will share her story in an interview. So if you ask me if I have seen the video entirely, I have not. I am reacting to it uh, the first time, so I kind of spoiled the head of it. So I will hope it makes sense to you. You may actually know from a previous videos that I have reacted to Max before. When I made that reaction video on uh, his autocomplete interview, which was actually pretty cool. So now let's proceed to the video. The truth is I'm scared, of course I'm scared. But it's not binary like that. It's not either you go and like die for Ukraine or you do nothing. You know what I mean? There is so much that you can do in between. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to go to war in Ukraine in order to help Ukraine. There's plenty of males over 18 in Ukraine that can't leave the country because of the new laws implemented after the war began. As far as I know, a lot of them don't want to go to war. Sometimes they don't have any choice. But how can you else help Ukraine? There's many ways you can help Ukraine. You could, for instance, donate to the Pertula Foundation that I link down below all the time, literally. You know, you don't have to donate a whole lot of money. You can contribute just a little bit. They'll be more than okay. When we already are talking about the mobilization in Ukraine, why not also react to another video as well, which is also about the mobilization in Ukraine. So, basically. Мобілізація до Збройних сил України під час воєнного стану не може бути добровільною чи примусовою, це обов'язок громадянина, наголосив начальник управління персоналу штабу командування сухопутних військ Збройних сил України Роман Горбач. Він також прокоментував заяви про так зване примусове вручення повісток на блокпостах. Далі – пряма мова. Що стосується самого розуміння мобілізації або призову по мобілізації, Тут добровільний порядок, в принципі, не передбачається. Добровільний порядок передбачається тільки при вступу на військову службу за контрактом. А при мобілізації або на строкову службу – це є обов'язок кожного громадянина боронити свою державу. Відкажіть ще, будь ласка, таке питання. Що буде з чоловіками, які підлягають мобілізації, яким, наприклад, вже є ну, там, повістки, об'яви, які виїхали за кордон? незаконним способом. Значить, щодо військозобов'язаних, які отримали повістки, якщо будуть виявлені факти, що вони виїхали за кордон незаконним способом, таким чином вони ухилилися від виконання свого обов'язку, від виконання від проходження військової служби. За це чинним законодавством передбачена кримінальна відповідальність. Тобто ці люди будуть кримінально переслідуватись відповідно законодавству України. As a result of the Russian invasion, more than 4 million Ukrainians became war refugees and had to flee Ukraine. But the majority refused to leave their homes, no matter how dangerous it got. My grandma was one of them. It took me eight months to persuade her to come to the border with Poland, where I plan to pick her up and take her to London. Yeah. Good idea. He's in a workshop in Poland and he's buying a bunch of stuff. I arrived a few days earlier to visit the refugee center in Warsaw and a school for Ukrainian kids with special needs. Dzień dobry. So, Dzień dobry is good morning in Polish. I want to bring them some presents and talk to parents about the issues they're facing now. Man, I hope there is enough. There are so many kids. First stop is a volunteer-run refugee center for Ukrainian families here in Poland. Lego. Puzzle. Thanks to people who donated, they have enough humanitarian aid when it comes to basic needs. Food, water, personal hygiene items. Man, this thing is so cool. Look, how do you spin these? Ah. But donations don't include non-essential items, such as toys and candy. Як ви взагалі тут вам живете? Добре, на вечір. Нормально? Спокійно, тихо. Угу. І бомблять хоча б. Трішки самоліти літають, трішки боюся. Це просто, якщо ви думаєте, це тільки один. Тільки один з цих центрів. Є, 
you know, and obviously there are those that are far worse too. This center has welcomed 1,500 Ukrainians. They live in good conditions here, but everyone has one main wish. They want to come back home. Finally, I got a phone call from my grandma. She told me that she was on the way to cross the Ukrainian border. I persuaded her to go on this journey, so every small thing that she doesn't like, I feel like it's my fault. I uh, mm. was obviously excited to see her. I was just paranoid, nervous for everything to go well, for the flights to come in on time. And uh, since my early years, I feel like I could relate to my grandma the most. I feel like out of everyone in my family, I was most like my grandma. I think it's tough. Like, I think any family being, being separated is really hard. Like, this is very different. Like, you don't know if you're going to see your family again. None of the people in the refugee center or the kids um, at the school that we visited with any degree of confidence can say that they will see their, their loved ones again. School for children from Ukraine, who fled from the war. All children received a psychological trauma і педагоги також з України, і вони не виключення. І батьки, які привезли цих діток сюди, вони мають також психологічні проблеми, які відображаються на них і на дітях. This is kind of like the art room where kids have drawings and different things from kind of Play-Doh and shapes and so on and so forth. But basically okay, Natalia has been telling me that in That's the beginning cool. when kids just came back from Ukraine they were drawing right. of course, they tanks, would draw some... Russian soldiers, yeah. bombs it, and now most of the drawings that they have draw some, so are many of those relatively peaceful so this is I think for the birthday of one of the kids everything the, the teachers here are saying that most of the drawings have the blue and yellow palette and they don't tell them like if you look at how many flags there are here like no one is telling the kids to draw the flags or to draw in the blue and yellow palette it's just because they, they miss home and that's kind of their experience I actually love that he puts the title like that, like time to meet grandma, okay, like it's something really important to him and you can tell. So as you said, time to meet grandma. Unfortunately it's a six. Do you read your coffee or like that? <laughs> I'm at the airport here in Poland and I'm gonna see my grandma in a few hours so I haven't seen We're her from the beginning the of the war so that's been right around here. six months. She has uh, safely crossed, well not really safely, she has successfully crossed the border um, from Ukraine so she's now in Moldova. Okay, here she is. Okay, here we are, with the grandma. She's a very warm person. Like everyone just, she just makes everyone feel nice. And I feel like in her life to what, you know, she dedicated her life to being a uh, dean of a college for children, uh, orphans and kids with special needs. And it's just such a hard job. Yeah, it's weird how it kind of worked out that like, we met people who do hear what she used to do in Ukraine, obviously in different circumstances, but still similar kind of thing. Yeah, so she was teaching economics, and when I was a kid, I struggled with economics, actually. Uh, so she used to help me a lot with school. I needed, like, a lot of help with school. I think we're very similar. I think we're very similar people. Just two weeks after my grandma left Ukraine, our house got bombed. Shortly after, Russian missiles also destroyed the grammar school that both my grandma and myself went to. Okay, that is of course, sad. I am upset about the flat. I mean, I spent my whole childhood there. But I'm also happy. Happy that we didn't wait another month before getting her out. 
my grandma hasn't seen the photos of the flat yet. Um, we are keeping them from her because it's bad. Like, I don't think she realizes how bad it is. Like, it's pretty brutal. So yeah, I feel like it was just super lucky. The thing is, like, they could have well been there. You know what I mean? If my grandma was back home, like, there is a, there is a chance that they would have been there during the blast. And, like, they could have died, you know? Now, when I hear Max talking about that, I can recall something pretty scary, actually. I can tell you that I was actually planning to go to Ukraine right before the war started. Actually, in proof, I can show you the tickets uh, right here. Right here? Right here? Yeah. Okay, so I don't think it's funny. We could actually have gone to Ukraine two days earlier, and we, if we have done that, uh, God bless, we didn't. Imagine if we did. Uh, we would have landed in the Borispol airport, and Borispol airport was actually bombed by drones at the same day as the invasion began. It's crazy to think about that we could have been in the middle of a drone attack. Там воспоминания, там прошла вся моя жизнь, вся моя жизнь. Я туда въехали мы, когда мне было 11 лет, и потом там родился мой сын, потом там жили мои внуки с семьей. Это просто святое место. Теперь его нет, оно разрушено. Но мы его восстановим. Мы восстановим, мы вставим окна, двери, мы там сделаем ремонт и будем жить после победы. But that said, like the war is not over, so she's just going back there to fix the windows. Like who cares? Mm -hmm. People are grateful for being in safety, but they're not at home. Like they, everyone just wants to go back and for it to be over, you know? Because this, she checks the phone like all the time. She still has the app um, that notifies you about the potential airstrike that just goes like, ooh, ooh. she still has everything on, like she's there. Um, at the same time, I think it's really stupid to go back. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I think it's stupid. I completely understand because uh, my own grandparents, uh, some of them did the same thing. And I can, yeah, definitely understand. Вообще это это страшная война. Представить себе, что это такие дикари на нас напали, это просто было невозможно. Они не воюют на фронте, они там не умеют, у них не получилось то, что они хотели. Так они просто истребляют города и убивают мирное население. Я завтра возвращаюсь назад, потому что там мой дом, хоть и разрушенный, но дом. Там мой муж, там мои друзья. Я хочу быть с ними, ну, с ними вместе. So that's it. Grandma has just gone. Um, she's gonna board in an hour and then go back. So, yeah, it's getting kind of shitty. Dropping her off at the airport was not easy. I wasn't happy with her decision to go back, but I felt like I had no choice but to accept it. Forty minutes away. She, uh, she still returned there. Yeah, okay. Okay, so as I said in his story, it is a kind of a private video, so I hope it's okay I actually post it on YouTube. Um, please go to his channel and give him the love of support that he deserves. As I already told you, there's different kind of ways that you can help Ukraine. So what can you do? You can volunteer or you can make your, your own command of volunteers, your own group. At least that is what my mother has done. She has gathered like a bunch of uh, people that also want to be volunteers and uh, made it into a group. What I can do is I can actually show you my mother's Facebook account so you can see that she collects, uh, you might ask why she collects like candles and uh, cans and uh, I'll tell you why. So in Ukraine, in warfare, there's those World War One alike trenches. Unfortunately, there are World War One alike because, uh, well, there are. You can't say there aren't. Actually, just take a look at them. It's far worse right now. While it's winter, it's a thing to consider, actually. So next up's gonna be a reaction on the trenches in Ukraine. So I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting thing to review. I hope you agree, and uh, see you in the next video. See you later. Mm -hmm.